And this session is also the debut at the Integrate of uh, Javier Fernandez from uh, Microsoft. And in his session, he's going to give us, give us an overview of what all is happening uh, with uh, Azure Event Grid. So a warm welcome, please, uh, for uh, Javier. Over to you, Javier. Thank you very much, Lex. And, and thank you. Welcome, everyone, uh, to this session. Um, and let's jump into this session. In these, uh, what I want to cover is this topic first. For those who are not probably uh, aware of Event Grid, I um, want to share that with you. What is Event Grid? Why you should use Event Grid? And then we're going to get into the recently released features. I'm going to provide you with a demo with a prominent feature that we just released a couple of days ago. And then we're going to walk you through uh, the roadmap that is ahead on features what we are going to be releasing. And we're going to leave some time for any question that you may have. OK, first, uh, to provide some context of what Event Grid is, let's start with, like in the beginning, when you wanted to uh, communicate or integrate two different workloads. Uh, maybe you own both, maybe you don't. But uh, that uh, a, a first thought maybe can think of, oh, I need uh, these other component service, microservice, to do something for me. For example, process a new order. Evidently, uh, for scalability uh, in, in uh, coupling concerns, this is not uh, optimal. Uh, and you probably thought about, OK, well, let's add a new message broker. that uh, you can enable asynchronous communication between these uh, components. Uh, it's still sending the same kind of message, meaning more as a command, more like uh, imperative kind of message, uh, expecting something from the other side. And the other side, the message broker, typically, when you first think about that, is usually you're imagining uh, a, 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 can be a queue. And so the direction of these uh, is, is meaning that this um, workload needs to be pulling this message broker to get that message. It's a better, it's better approach because it has, uh, it's asynchronous. I mean, you just send the event, I mean, the, the one that originate the message, sorry, um, originate the message and forgets about that. The message broker will uh, make sure or will have that message available for the other side to consume. Well, uh, is you, your concern is about uh, decoupling the, the both components at, at the at both ends of the broker you also can think about a pop-up event broker in which a publisher just uh, emits events uh, like order created and an event subscriber consumes that, but it's mostly like consumed, but in, in a very kind of passive way. It just exposes an endpoint and is the event broker that pushes, sends that event to that endpoint. So in this uh, architecture, the event subscriber is decoupled from the publisher or even from the broker. So in theory, you can uh, replace the broker and uh, event subscriber doesn't need to be aware of that. Uh, and this is a better approach if you are looking for the coupling, for scalability, for maybe for distributed systems. And, and that begs the, the, the idea you see, uh, I'm. Here, differentiating between a message and an event in, in even my, my logo. An event is really a kind of a message, but very specific type of message. Uh, so an event is, is really an announcement of an occurrence that something happened. Usually, that means that something happened in a, a state change in your system. It doesn't convey that much uh, expectations about what to do with that. It just informs that something has happened in your system or in the source system. Uh, and doesn't carry that much information in it. Um, so it, it contains the information about what is the subject of the event, meaning what uh, th this event, uh, is it something changed, something was created? What is, that, what is that thing? What is that resource? And then it usually contains a URL in which uh, the, the recipient of that event can call to get more information. So, and this is an example of an event uh, using the cloud events uh, schema specification that is an open standard. 
uh, there are the first few uh, up to data are called context attributes. Some of them are required, some of them are optional. For example, there is type that is important order created. You may want to filter by that uh, and, and select it and send it to a specific destination. Subject is an optional um, attribute, context attribute, but it's also very important, meaning what is that subject? They, what is that thing that is what the, that for which the event is, is, is talking about? The data, the event data, the, the data object that you see here is, is that part of the event that is totally in control of you. If you are the one that is um, a, the developing a solution and is uh, racing events, this is what you are gonna be defining. And again, you will include here properties that are a, the minimal required for to be actionable in the case for routing and, and do something with the event. For example, if you want to, if there are use cases in which orders, this is an order event, in which they need to go to a different destinations. Uh, so you may want to include something like this uh, attribute is rush order. Why? Because you will use that to select the event and route it to a specific destination that you want. Okay. Moving on, so an event broker is uh, what, what you're seeing here. It has an input channel that exposes an endpoint to which a publisher sends events. Uh, it, it also has associated to that input channel configuration items for filtering, meaning selecting the events and routing information, meaning to where it should, the events should be sent. And it can be many of, of this uh, associated to the, that input channel. Uh, a, for example, in here, we have uh, API deployed to a Kubernetes cluster that is obviously exposes an endpoint and we're sending that to it. And it, all that is configured and not all the events needs to be sent to every destination. Again, that's why we have the filtering configuration, selecting events. And here we're sending to Azure service bus and, and, and is, uh, it can be the same event or it can be other types of event again, according to the filtering criteria. Again, emphasizing the fact that the, these event subscribers don't need to know who, is, who or what is sending the event, they're completely the couple. If there is some coupling, um, coupling uh, between uh, the publisher and the subscriber is in the knowledge of the event uh, schema. But this is not really a, a, a coupling because anything that re receives is received by any, any, any application. Obviously you need to know how to deserialize that, what is the schema is. So it's not a, any, anything to, uh, uh, any strong coupling or by any means. And that, what I just described is exactly what event grid is. Uh, that input channel is a resource type that we call topic and that is associated to uh, those filtering and routing configuration that we call event subscriptions. Other than that is exactly uh, what I described. That is event grid uh, uh, and, and we support it in, in uh, Azure and now on Kubernetes and I'm gonna be talking about that. Now, let me explain you. Um, the topic, this is a simple diagram that explains the kind of uh, resources that we have, the green things. Um, and topics in reality, we have several kinds of topics depending on the publisher, uh, the, 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 that service uh, or workload that orig originates these events. We have what we call system topics that are topics that you can create uh, uh, topics, well, they created the topics and subscriptions that which, uh, the, the sources of the events are the Azure services, our own Azure services. You can see a small list here. We have many more and we'll see those, but you can consume the events those Azure services are emitting. Now, if you want to implement your own event-driven architectures, you can use custom topics and or domains and those are another source, meaning is your workload, your application, your service that will be raising those events uh, for others or, or another part of your uh, uh, solution to consume. 
And then we have what we call partner uh, services or partner events in which uh, if you have, uh, for example, uh, a, a, you are a SaaS provider, maybe with a multi-tenant solution, and you want to segregate concerns between your publishing and they consuming your events, uh, we have that solution for that, that we call partner events, and that is another way uh, or another source of events uh, that we support. Obviously, they go to Event Grid, we support Cloud Events Schema, and we support many kinds of event handlers, hosted on Azure or else. Uh, obviously, for serverless uh, processing, we have functions for workflows and serverless logic apps for an other message brokers that we support on Azure Service Bus, Event Hub that are part of our own team, and the storage queues, uh, that is uh, Azure Storage Service. And then uh, we have other des uh, other destinations, and, and really Webhook is to anything, anything that there is an endpoint, an event grid has network disability into that, we can send event to that. Okay, um, what these are, this list is the current system topics that, that we have. Um, what I want to convey here on this slide is that your solution has many, potentially many services that, that, that in, in, in which you build your solution. And you, you, you may want to take advantage of the rich set of events and, and capabilities that you can enable by consuming those events that uh, the Azure services provide in your own workloads. And I'm gonna explain you uh, in detail one of them that we just released. But uh, um, by the way, um, this is uh, the list and with your feedback, uh, we can get more on board it. If you, if you provide us your feedback, what, how you can provide feedback, you go to the documentation of any of these, I mean, you, you search for that. In any article on Azure, you go down, you click pr provide feedback, and uh, th there is a button, and then you can provide directly, there is the, the leads you to forum that you can provide feedback. Okay, now the question is, why then you would use Event Grid? Well, for the reasons that I have already touched on, uh, first is a pops of system. Again, it lands for these uh, building architectures that are the couple, because uh, be the, the coupling between the, the components, the publisher, the broker, and the subscribers. Also, because of the nature of what an event is, is you really build your, your uh, integration event-driven and you're using events, the, the publisher, when you're sending that message, that event, shouldn't have any other expectation. It's not a command. It's not an instruction for something to do, for someone to do. It's not something that, that, um, that you're expecting a response. Obviously, you're expecting a response that is committed to the broker, but beyond that, you're just announcing. And it's all the components, your microservices, for example, are integrated in that way. Uh, they are able to uh, scale differently. They are able to, uh, they, 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 they have different APIs. Obviously there is no type coupled. That, that is a good approach and it's a good choice as a event broker. Uh, as I mentioned, it enables uh, it, you to react to events originated from, uh, from Azure services. You can create your own event uh, driven architectures with custom topics or domains. And if you're a, a software provider, a SaaS provider, we have a solution for you uh, for a, a, a having a first class um, a user experience in which you uh, make available your events. We are Cloud Events 1.0 compliant. And more importantly, we are working as we speak with others in the industry to define the specs for the, the next APIs, which is event discovery, event subscription, and event schema registry. Uh, once we finish the, the, the specs, we are gonna be incorporating those, uh, implementing those APIs into event grid. Okay, so what are the recently released features that uh, on, on here? And I'm watching my watch. Um, 
first um, delivery properties I'm going to be talking on some of these I'm going to be talking about uh, in in a slide with a, and and some of I'm going to touch in on this in here on this slide so delivery properties we're going to talk in another slide time to leave so we when you're creating an event subscription uh, and you're telling event grid that you want to send this event to a storage queue now there is a parameter that you can set for the time to leave of that event or that message in the storage queue. So this was a, 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 a feature that has been requested and we already implemented back in March. There is a set of advanced filters uh, that we introduce uh, and we'll be talking about that. Managed identity support for regional system topics is now available. Managed identity is an Azure concept in which or facility in which they allows you to um, manage for you the, 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 the identities without you needing to rotate uh, credentials. And is that identity is associated to a topic. And as long as that topic exists, that identity exists so that it uh, removes complexity on the uh, a developer side. So it's available for regional system topics. There are a few system topics that are global, meaning that are associated to global resources. Um, most of them are regional and we support now managed identity for that. Azure Ready Cache and Azure Policy as an event source, meaning as a system topic has been released and we'll be talking about that. Uh, now you can transform event grid schema events to cloud event schemas for custom topics and domains that was recently released. Uh, and our more prominent and, and recent feature is uh, we now support event grid to be deployed on Kubernetes using Azure Arc as the enabling technology. And we're gonna be talking on that in detail in the next coming slides. But first, the, the delivery properties, I want to show you what that means. It means that when you are creating the event subscription and you go to the last tab, delivery properties, you are able to set headers on the outgoing uh, request that is delivers the event to whatever destination you have. So for example, here uh, you added application dash priority and this is a static, so meaning that you provided the, the value. You type it, you paste it, uh, and, and then we support dynamics. That means that you on the value, you can refer to the data event, uh, a data event property like we saw, uh, we saw here. By the way, I don't know if there is a delay on the on the video, but it's, it's data that, for example, is rush order, in this case, that full, um, my example, and getting back, data that full is, is here, you refer to that value, and then you provide whatever header name. And in the outgoing request, you're, you're gonna see those headers that are probably needed for, for your destination. So that is one, a, the, the feature that we release uh, back in March. New advanced filters. Now we have the capability of filtering on arrays. Uh, in reality, uh, so what you see here on the top uh, is the section uh, is actually when you click on filters, on that page, there is this section of advanced filters, meaning how you're gonna select events and there is uh, basically criteria that you set with the keys and operator and values. For example, you are saying, and this is an example of how the API uh, body looks like, the request body. It is you define the advanced filters, the operator type is a string not contains, for example, and the key meaning this value data.key1 so for example, the event has that data.key1 and has an array of ABC and it's gonna be compared to the values Contoso and Fabricam. So in the past, we always supported values, meaning it's an array comparing to a, 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 an array. But we, what we now support is that on the key that this value could be an array, just like the way you are seeing it here, it's an array. So we support that array to array comparison now. Um, 
and we support new operators uh, that you can see here. And also we allowed filtering on cloud uh, event extension context attributes. So again, you can augment, you can add new context attributes. As you remember on our event, the ones on top are context attributes. You can extend that and you can add and we support uh, filtering based on those uh, context attributes. Getting back. Um, now, we support Azure policy notifications that you can consume events through a uh, system topic through event grid. It, with this, this is an important, um, it, it enables important scenarios and an important uh, uh, clubbing of Azure policy plus event grid, meaning system topics is a type of resource for event grid because the notifi policy notifications, you can get the compliance status a given policy, in this case is non-compliant and react to it. Uh, you probably know that Azure policy notifications has a remediation feature, meaning uh, Azure policy not only allows you to set policies, for example, that a certain uh, a, a service that you're creating needs to have these type of configuration, or these endpoints that you configure should not go to this destination or should go to only this destination, meaning some kind of policy. And then is in, in Azure policy also, is, you, is, is uh, your deployment doesn't comply to that. It has a, a, a way for you to co the configure a remediation action. Within Azure policy, we don't, without using event grid, but there are some cases that are still you need to be notified of those events because you want, for example, uh, to code yourself the, how you react to that. You want to remediate yourself. You have a scripted uh, that solution and you then you need uh, to receive an event. Another that we have seen customers using that, that they have a compliance service or server that really reports out on the compliance or not uh, across the organization. So these kind of events are necessary to, to have that uh, a kind of uh, control and dashboarding, or you can create your own simple dashboard, uh, uh, or so, so you can send it to Splunk, Azure Sentinel, or Log Analytics. Again, uh, this is, I, I feel that this is a very important scenario for most organizations, uh, because if you are an organization of some size, you. You care about compliance and this is enabling that. The other event source is, is you are using Azure Cache for Redis. Um, so there are these event types that are now, uh, you are able to listen and uh, subscribe to and react in some way. Uh, for example, when the scaling of the Azure Cache uh, for Redis is completed, you can react in some way, for example, that there is uh, an extra step that needs to be done after scaling that you need to have to be done. It is, it is a way to do it. And this is an example of, of that event. Moving on, um, now uh, we have released in a, a couple of days ago, event grid on Kubernetes with Azure Arc. I'm saying with Azure Arc because Azure Arc is the enabling technology, is the enabling service on Azure that allows to, if you have a Kubernetes cluster that to be connected to Azure, meaning to be known to Azure. Uh, we, um, oh, we, de we deployed uh, some agents into your Kubernetes cluster so that there is a visibility through, through that mechanism uh, event grid, uh, an event grid broker is deployed on that Kubernetes cluster. We are currently supporting Azure Kubernetes service uh, and the Red Hat OpenShift distribution. Uh, we're going to be adding more as we hear uh, feedback. But what are the the use cases? What is 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 giving you? Now you have the 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 possibility of integrate, I mean, create event-driven architectures on your own Kubernetes cluster. Uh, for example, you have 
hot uh, service, uh, what a Kubernetes service, and sending those events to event grid so that they can deliver to one or more services pods uh, on your, the same Kubernetes cluster. Or you can send them to Azure Functions, Logic Apps, or App Service. And I'm, I'm talking about here these services not on Azure because Functions, Logic App, and App Service are also available and deployable to a Kubernetes cluster. So they are hosted on a Kubernetes cluster and you can use that with the same um, control plane and data plane gestures as, as you have used them before. Uh, you can use them on Azure, uh, sorry, on, on the Kubernetes cluster. So that is one scenario. The other scenario is a generalization of the first one in which you have a private network, typically on-prem, but it can be on the cloud. And you have a publisher, well, this is a typo running on-prem. Again, it can be on the cloud, but the fact is that it's outside the Kubernetes cluster, but it's in the same private network. And you need to, uh, this is the source of the events and you need to send events to a event grid broker so that it can obviously send it to some other destinations. You can configure an ingest controller on Kubernetes cluster and then our service, this is our component and then goes to the broker. So um, this is one scenario and, and from the perspective of really publishing events from where you can publish. Another one is where you can send them. Uh, event grid, obviously, from the, from the Kubernetes cluster, as long as it has network visibility into an endpoint, it can deliver any, anywhere. Uh, you have on Azure Cloud, you can deliver to a service that is supposed to an endpoint on AKS. You can do that. You can send it to uh, event grid itself um, on the cloud, or event hubs, or service bus functions, Etc. Um, or any really any, any anything that has an endpoint, or it can be another cloud on on-prem. Again, if it has network visibility, Event Grid can deliver to it. So those are the main uh, use cases for which you will use Event Grid on Kubernetes with Azure Arc that are available for you uh, to uh, leverage. Now, what are the features that we are providing? Obviously, it's a pop-up system. Uh, it has reliable delivery. We have retry logic. Is the destination is not immediately available, we, we retry it later. Uh, we support HTTP and HTTPS. Right now, we support just like Azure Event Grid SaaS-based authentication, SaaS key-based authentication, so it's a key. Uh, destination supported is the one that we just talked about. We support only the cloud event schema and only is kind of a misnomer. Um, it, it only means read it like all because um, it, cloud event schema existed after we launched event grid. And because of that, we, we, had, we have proprietary uh, schemas, event grid schema, and then we support custom schema for you to provide your custom schema. But the user use cases that you are going to be enabling, um, leveraging, if you, use, if you use cloud events schema, are greater than any of the other two. So I encourage you to use cloud event schema. We support provide topic metrics uh, uh, through Prometheus. Uh, it, it's, it you, you configure a client to, to connect to the event meeting broker and you can get metrics on uh, events delivered, event failures, et cetera. We have a basic console uh, based log uh, debugging uh, uh, for the preview. We're maturing that into a, a more robust uh, way in which we can debug and, and support you. And what I want to emphasize that the ARM control plane, meaning for creating resources, or publishing events, the SDKs, uh, the data plane SDKs, are the same as Azure Event Grid. You don't need to learn a new API, a new uh, way of doing things. It is the same. The only thing that changes when you, for example, are creating a topic, you need to. There are three values that you need to provide, uh, and that's it. You need to say that you are. It's a Kubernetes cluster that you are deploying and where in the Kubernetes cluster, that is two or three values. Uh, so other than that, 
the control plane and SDK experiences the same. Now that's for public preview. For GA, what we are gonna provide is multi-tenant support. Right now, we just al allow to create one event grid uh, broker per cluster. So we're gonna allow to have uh, several. Uh, high availability du during upgrades is something that we're working on. Additional Kubernetes distribution supported. Again, we need your feedback uh, and we'll be supporting that. Diagnostic loss and complete support experiences, what I was talking about, the console-based log debugging, we need to mature that to a, a better a support experience. We're working on that. Dead lettering on Azure, eventually, meaning on the cloud, you can specify a location, a blob, uh, where is the destination is unavailable, all those events and settles being dropped, they are sent to that location, that blob. We don't have that on event grid on Kubernetes, that is on the backlog. The same is auto scaling. Um, for example, the ability to auto scale, uh, given the name, the, the RADOS event uh, being published is something that is, is on our backlog. Uh, and also right now, what we have is a pops up event broker. We want to uh, augment that, uh, evolve that into a, uh, uh, a broker that also supports um, pool semantics, meaning queues, uh, that is in our backlog. And um, from that, I want to uh, provide you with a demo of event grid on Kubernetes. Uh, what I'm gonna be showing is uh, how, how I integrated uh, microservice, which is an order publisher on a namespace called sales, sending that to order an order processor for the order fulfillment solution. This everything on a Kubernetes cluster. What I'm, uh, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a repeat here because I have a, a recorded video. Um, but again, we have uh, this order publisher that is generating uh, three types of events order created. Um, and before we go further, it was order created, order cancel, and order change. Um, and what I want to show on the other screen, the, the screen that we're gonna transition in is that yes, these pods are running uh, on, on the namespace and they are the source of the events. So let's do that. So you see the namespace is sales and it is the order publisher is running. Now, a, it's a, there is a topic that is being exposed by the event grid broker that you configure how you get the topics you get. So get topics, uh, which is an, a resource also in Kubernetes. And the topic is topic 0401. And yeah, obviously that is the one that you're sending that to. Then you have the event grid broker with subscriptions that tells where to send that uh, events to, to our other processor service. So then you describe the event subscription that, for example, that I created, and you can see how he, um, the, the URL that conforms, as you know, Kubernetes conforms to the local services deployed in the naming convention, or the processors in the name of the service order fulfillment is the namespace then dot SVC, dot cluster, that local, and I want to just um, go back a little bit. Okay, well, do we, 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 uh, I am here starting again, sorry. Um, let me go back to the point that I wanted to be where I was. This is what, what I was saying. So if you deploy the service within the cluster, uh, the, it, Kubernetes provides an internal DNS ser service and register the fully qualified domain name for, and uh, with, with these, doma these domains as .svc.cluster.local for any service. So it is how you configure your destinations on the event subscription with this standard uh, uh, 
uh, full equal uh, domain. And And we're going to see that obviously the order processor is running. Is the pod and the service and the IP. You see it there, but you don't need to know the IP service. You know the convention for services. Now, the next thing, let me explain what we're going to do. What I, what I did is to simulate or kick off the the, the order uh, uh, publisher to start sending events. For that, I create a web uh, application that sends, uh, in this case, it's a message, not an event, to the order publisher to start generating events. And on the right-hand side, what you see is the order processor, I'm, print, I'm gonna be printing the logs, meaning uh, following the logs because all the events that are sent by the processor are, con are consumed are received by the order processor and printed on the standard out. So you will see events coming here. Um, and we'll go that. So I'm saying that my tool generates one event, for example, and that is or with order ID 693. So we need to click enter on the other side and then we'll see 693. That's the order, the same order is a cancel order, a purchase order, and we have that. Now let's generate three events. So those events are 946, 905, and 129. And that's what you have here. 929 is an order created, which is order created. Um, then 905 is cancel order cancel which is there, and 946 order change. So I generated randomly, but chance it got all the three types. So that is the way that you can use uh, event grid on current one use case uh, that enables more, more uh, services and more uh, use cases. Um, in some cases, uh, there are there are some some folks that want to use event, event grid on a Kubernetes cluster because they want they don't want, for example, to be tightly coupled with the cloud provider. Um, there is that's one, one one use case that I or one reason why they would do it. I just want to mention that if you have a workload on this order publisher on Kubernetes cluster. You can still use obviously Azure Event Grid, you, especially if you are if you are using sorry if, if the Kubernetes cluster is AKS, you can still use uh, Azure Event Grid, or or again for internal communication Event uh, Event Grid deployed on a Kubernetes cluster. And with that, let's transition to the features uh, that we are going to be releasing in the in the coming months and and plus. What we have, again, I alluded already, uh, we're working on the specs with other industry, with others in the industry. So once the specs are finished, uh, the, we should have a private preview. We have, should implement those into Event Grid and have a private preview. They may not come all three at once, uh, but uh, they are on, we, it's something that we are actively working. Now, new Azure service event sources, meaning new system topics, we have a much, a much longer list than what you have, you see here. What you see here is the ones that are coming along uh, a more, more quickly. Um, you will see Azure Kubernetes services being released uh, soon. Uh, Azure FarmBits, which is a solution for the agriculture industry, should see public previews already in private preview. Azure API management, we're working with them and you should see it in the next six months or so, uh, within the six, six months or so. Azure Fire, which is a solution for APIs on the health uh, industry should be public preview. Azure uh, Open Supply Chain Platform should be coming as a private preview in the coming months. 
and Azure Container instances of the same. So again, this is a subset of all the services that we're working on. And again, if you don't see a service that, that you need for the, to consume events, reach out to that service because this is, we, we are the enablers, uh, but it's really also the, the services, the source service that generate the events that uh, needs to see your use cases so that they, they feel more, more compelled to, to work with us and integrate. Um, we are gonna be releasing a authentication uh, for event publishing. This is gonna be, should be coming early July or at the end of June. So this is coming, we, we already have it actually on some pre-production environment. So it's practically done. Event Grid on Kubernetes, GA, obviously we just released public preview. The next step is GA. Partner events are in public preview. The next click stop is GA. And I mentioned that we support regional system topics managed identity. Now, the next coming months uh, is gonna be the support for global system topics managed identity. And that is our roadmap uh, that what we have for Event Grid. Uh, with this, let's transition to any questions that you may have. Javier, I've been uh -huh. answering some questions. Uh -huh. uh, one that I left for you uh, was, is ARC being supported uh, in on-prem environments such as Nutanix? Not yet. Uh, that is, so there are two, but we want to hear from you. There are two uh, kind of um, steps for, for supporting that. First, uh, as I mentioned, the enabling technology is Azure Arc. Azure Arc needs to support that distribution uh, first because it's through Azure Arc that we are able to deploy it. So if you go again to, you look for on, on the web, Azure um, is, is actually like this, Azure enable Kubernetes. Azure Arc enable Kubernetes, and you get to their documentation. Again, in any article, you go to the bottom and you are gonna see a button a feedback. You provide feedback to that, hey, I need this distribution. So that needs to be, and I, I don't remember seeing that in the list, by the way, for Azure Arc. Uh, it, and they have an article on what are the, 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 the Kubernetes distribution supported. You provide that feedback and then uh, we're gonna also hear from that. And the, the first thing is that they need to support it. And then we're gonna start saying, okay, well, we're gonna go to with this distribution, support that, and we're gonna do our own testing and support that. So this kind of a two phase, but, but please do provide us that feedback so that we can, we can meet your requirements. All right, next question. Will there be an event grid viewer natively like Service Bus Explorer within the portal? We, uh, no, for event grid, I, I'm, we, uh, so <laughs> this is, well, let me return the question to you, Kevin. So I'm aware that we are gonna be working on a service bus explorer. Uh, 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 that's yeah. explorer or emulator, uh, Kevin? Well, uh, to answer his question explicitly, um, it's a great feature ask, please vote for it, let us know. And, and uh, as those asks come in, we can prioritize that, that feature. So yes, please do that. Yeah. So the, the next and, question and, and, and again the same the same the same way. Any article of event, event grid, you go to the bottom, click feedback, and provide it. By the way, these these should be already there. You just vote. You just vote on that. There is a feature for voting, and we we can see the the number of people interested on that. So I'll, I'll highlight a couple of questions that I already answered, but you may uh, we have just a minute. Um, there was a question about, you know, you talking about cloud events, but what about the proprietary schema for event grid? Proprietary schema for event grid in what sense? It's not going any way, where, anywhere. Uh, it's just, we're going to still be supporting that. Yep. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's, I just called out that we're encouraging folks to use the cloud events. That's our CNCF standard and that integrates with other services. So it's, it's encouraged to use that one, but the other one's still support. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, uh, Steph Jan's asking for Cosmos DB integration. Yeah, it's something that we are working with uh, 
uh, Cosmos DB um, uh, on on enabling that. I, again, um, it, I, I I would encourage you to provide us feedback on that so that we can have again just like any other product, uh, we go by priorities, and the more we hear from from users, the more the we we put it higher on the stack of those features. Yeah, for that one in particular. Um, reach out to Ask Grid because we need your scenarios. Uh, we are working closely with the Cosmos DB team and uh, they need that input as well to help shape what that looks like. Right. The, the, more the, the, you, the more they hear it from you, the, the higher they will put it in their, in their work list as well. Thank you very much, everyone. Covey.com. 